Hello, everyone. Uh, lots of people out there watching us and listening in on our website. Um, welcome along to the Bertha Park High School at Local Management Group Transition Question and Answer Evening um, for Primary 7. Parents, um, my name is Stuart Clyde. I'm the head teacher here at Bertha Park High School, and I am joined by a whole bunch of lovely ladies uh, from that surrounding schools. Now, just before we came on live, we were trying to start a couple of technical issues. We do have some people that are trying to get in, um, including one of the guidance staff from uh, Bertha Park High School. Uh, so we're going to try and get them to join the call as we go in. So please bear with us while we um, wrestle with a couple of um, technical issues. So I, um, I think maybe just ask the rest of the folk around the screen to give us a wave. Oh, that's okay. So the, the comms are working well. So we're all uh, really looking forward to meeting your children at Bertha Park High. Uh, and the transition process, as we're working on it just now, is currently all online. Um, however, uh, we are hoping to do a little bit of face-to-face, -face, but I don't want to put any spoilers out there just now. Now, you may or may not be used to this system. If you've got any kids that are currently at Bertha Park High, you might have taken part in one of these Q&As before. If you haven't, uh, where you're watching this, just below there's a chat box. Now, if you bear with me for a little moment, I'll try and see if I can activate the chat box, because at the moment it probably won't be accepting any messages. So bear with me for a moment. Okay, so the question and answer feature should now be activated. So there's a space in there for you to write your name. Um, if you wouldn't mind writing your name and then the questions that you have, the questions that you ask there will pop up on our screen and hopefully within a few seconds we'll be able to have a look at them and actually respond to those questions. It might be helpful for you to point out who you'd like to answer the, the question if you've got a specific person. Um, if not, then we will uh, just share it out amongst us. So give it a go. And whenever we have any questions here, we'll attempt to answer them. So as I said, at the moment, our um, transition process is all online currently. Um, but we are hoping to get some face-to-face -face interaction with the kids, hopefully um, setting aside a little bit of time to get your kids actually into the building as the restrictions uh, lift a little bit. So the extended support team at Bertha Park High have already made uh, communications and been in touch with some of the parents of kids that might require a little bit extra support in transitioning to high school. So that's on the go just now and we've got an all new guidance staff at Bertha Park High which are they're all really really looking forward to interacting with your kids and getting those things going. So let's take a look at the questions to see if we have any at the moment. We're currently working over two screens so if we look away from the camera for a moment you'll understand what that is about. Um, okay we've got Amy asking the first question which is what languages are taught at Bertha Park? Well at the moment we are looking at French for our first language and we also have Spanish being taught and there's a possibility that German may be part of that as well but it'll, it'll all be down to demand but in the first instance for the first and second year at least uh, French and Spanish are the, are the languages. So that's Amy with our first question. See if I have any other questions coming in. Nothing just now. We do have 35, 36 people online. I can see that from my system here. I've got 36 people watching the broadcast. So hopefully we'll get one or two questions coming in from them. No more questions. Right, I think we can all go home now. Fantastic. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed your transition evening. Stuart, it might be worth uh, talking about the list of activities that has been set out from Bertha Park. The children all received a really helpful list of activities proposed for over the next few weeks, transition tasks. Uh, so maybe parents have got some questions about, that, about uh, the information that were given. Absolutely. Do you have that list in front of you? Because that list was meant to be coming with the member of staff that's having difficulty connecting okay. to the system. <laughs> so if you Sorry. have that list that you'd be one step ahead of me just now, Mary Francis. I, 
I could get it up on my phone. That would be great. So I think that the the, um, the, th the whole theme of the transition activities program is so that the children in primary school get to know staff at secondary school, so and a range of subjects. So each week there's a different activity from different subjects, so the children have got a really good variety. And I know that several of the children at, at Dunbarney are very excited about it and think there's a, a great opportunity there. And I know that we started today, there was a really interesting video came in today with, uh, and some information from ex-pupils of ours, which was lovely to see. So I know the children enjoyed that. Great. There is somebody ask, actually asking just now, Mary Frances, about talking about the transition tasks. Okay. So if you could carry on with that, I'll get to one of the other questions. Maybe you okay. could just read from that list while I try and get the list up frantically. I'm trying to get the, um, was it in the general that you see? Come back through my phone. I've said here, hello, Bertha Park. I love the transition schedule leaflets, very colourful and detailed. All I need to do now is find them, though. Because it's, can anybody else get them up on Mary, their phone? Mary, Franz, Mary Frances, I have them here if you want me to start reading them out. And a copy of them just to share with parents. I think parents will all have, have had them, but it'll be interesting for them to know the activities, the range. Okay. So we've had... The week beginning the 19th of May, um, Bertha Park sent out a virtual tour of the school building and the primary seven children were asked to fill in a form with some information about themselves. Um, this week, week beginning the 26th, um, there's a pupil question and answer session. So Bertha Park pupils will answer any questions that the primary children have. Then there is a map of the world task, which the children completed this week. And they used the Bertha Park map to meet all of the new S1s that will be that will be at Bertha Park across all of our primary schools. Um, and also the Bertha Park staff gave information in the map. Next week, I'm just looking at the programme here, there's a task called Manglish activity, which is I can, I can expand on that a little bit. Oh, man ma Manglish is what we're calling maths and English because they, they, they have formed themselves in a little group called Manglish because they're working in tandem with literacy and numeracy and bringing it all together and they've got a whodunit activity for the P7s from the Manglish department, maths and English. Okay, uh, week beginning the 10th of May, um, we've got grab your lab coat and goggles, it's time for the science activity. And there's also an exciting intro into what they'll be studying in social subjects. Okay, week beginning the 17th of May is going to be music. So they will be working with Mr. Blythe on that. And they will also get more information from the new guidance staff as well. Week beginning the 24th of May, they will get a taste of the modern languages and they will also have time to look at being creative with the visual arts department. And week beginning the 31st of May is getting active and feeling healthy with um, a task from the PE department. And they will also have a task from the craft and design technology department. And then the final week, the 7th of June, the final challenge will be from the business and computing department. And they will also be cooking up a storm, it says here, with the home economics department. And there'll also be an optional home learning task there. So hopefully they'll be making something tasty. Fabulous. Thank you very much indeed for that rundown. So if you haven't already received the transition programme, you should be doing that very, very soon. Uh, but we're trying to make them as hands on and as entertaining for the kids as possible. It's always a challenge when you've got to do it online and not quite face to face. Um, so it's uh, the, we're, we're doing the best we can with, with some of the resources that we have. and uh, But I've, I've had a sneak preview at some of them and they do look really, really good fun. But what we are trying to do, and I was hoping to keep this um, for Miss Ainsley who was joining us, but I think there's been some technical issues with getting her online. But what we are hoping to do is set aside half a day per primary school. Um, to get the kids up into high school to do some in-person 
transition uh, project. We won't be able to run the entire programme like that, but because the restrictions are beginning to lift and we can start to manage these processes a little bit more individually per school, we, we think we can get each class, uh, each school rather, each P7 class up to Bertha Park High School for about half a day. Now that won't be all together because th that wouldn't be in the spirit of um, easing the restrictions, but we're looking at setting each primary school with half a day to come up and actually take part in some of the activities that we can all around the, uh, around the school. So um, some questions then, we've got loads of questions coming in. Um, anybody that's been watching me in the background, ladies, anybody got a question that they would like to take? Okay, and that I'm, came I'm happy to help out with the enhanced transition one from the primary's perspective. Thank you. So when anybody moves on, be it from nursery to primary one or primary, or changes, indeed changes schools or moves from primary to secondary, uh, we generally have a meeting with families the same way as you would have ASN meetings other years and we pass on information. So schools, primary schools and secondary colleagues have started that process already and met with secondary colleagues to pass on information. Now, I don't know. I don't know who that who this is. I'm speaking to, but I, and I don't even know which school you're at. So there might be specific arrangements that your school make uh, to support your child. But that is, it can be individualised. But the general principles are that we pass in all the information on. We uh, share information, and we actually share information on other pupils as well in terms of friendship groups and who who works well with who. So we pass all that information on to secondary school. Unfortunately, our colleagues from the guidance department and learning support department at Bertha Park, I believe they're meaning to come on, but can't go on at the moment, and they would have a better idea from uh, from their point, from their perspective, of what the plans are in terms of support. I don't know if that helps, anonymous at six or seven, because it's quite a general answer because I don't know the specifics. And, and just to add to that as well, Mary Frances, that there will be, you know, child plan meetings that will happen towards transition as well, which will include parents, families, mm -hmm. um, primary school staff and the secondary staff near the time as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, we will also be getting the young people with particular additional needs up to the school as a priority. Um, but if you do have any further questions, Jennifer, with respect to, to your own child, if oh, I can encourage you. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Stuart, I just realised it was a name. Sorry, I just heard, I saw the anonymous. Yeah, well, that's Sorry. okay. Um, maybe get in touch with Mrs Stead at Bertha Park High School. Deb Stead will help you out with any inquiries specific to your young person. And I know, Stuart, um, this week, uh, Chris Forber Community Link was starting to get in touch with some families as well to make arrangements for their children coming up for Enhanced Transition too. That's perfect. Thanks a lot for that, Stephanie. Um, okay, so a couple of other questions. How do you encourage and support the kids to make new friendships at high school if they don't know very many people? Well, the tasks that we in, that we're asking them to take part in with transition uh, are tend to be mixed up now if we were in person uh, for the whole of the transition project this would be a doddle because we would just make sure that the groups of kids that were taking part in these um, particular projects were all mixed from different primary schools it's a little bit more difficult now because it is uh, mostly virtual uh, and even when the kids come up to the high school if we can manage to wangle this for half a day they will still only be within their primary school groups so probably the the lion's share of integrating them in with other kids will be done in the new term from august normally we would like to get the back broken of that beforehand but it's not been possible this year uh, but what we do is we, we carefully make sure that there's this delicate balance um, that we, we, we try and strike as much as possible where the kids are in classes with one or two people that they know so that they're, they're not completely on their own. But we also push them a little bit out of their comfort zone to force them into being um, in the company of other kids um, in, their, in their S1 classes. But it's that delicate balance and there's always wriggle room. If something's not working out for somebody, we can sometimes make some, uh, some little adjustments into August uh, when the kids start in S1. But what we find is it's quite a natural process, especially at social times, like morning intervals and breaks, the kids will naturally um, intermingle with each other and it does tend to take care of itself. But if it doesn't, please do let us know. 
how long is each period? We have a very different structure from lots of other schools um, around the country. Uh, lots of other places have periods of, say, 45 or 50 minutes. Our periods are actually 80 minutes, uh, which sounds a little bit like a double period, and it's a bit shorter than a double period. And sometimes when you say that, people recoil and say, oh, imagine having 80 minutes of the one thing and doing the one thing. Well, our our period lengths are longer than others. However, the staff are very skilled at being able to mix up what the kids do during that time uh, so as to not have them sitting down doing the one task for the whole 80 minute period. And the thinking behind that is that with 80 minutes, we can really go in depth into the learning so that the kids aren't just coming in, getting their stuff ready, 15 minutes from the teacher, and then it's time to pack up and move to another department because an awful lot of time is lost in a school with coming in and leaving and changing classes in a high school so we've tried to cut that out to get longer periods and it seems to be working pretty well the two years that we have run it. Will it be the same as last year when S1 only went in on their own at the start of term for a day or two? I can't quite remember. Claire, there's no plan for that. We are looking at having everybody in school um, at the one time at the beginning of the day at the return in August. So it'll be S1, 2, 3 and 4 this year that will be coming back at the same time. Okay, Paul's asking, are the lunch menus allergy friendly? Yes, they are. The Tayside contracts, if you wanted to get in touch with Tayside contracts and ask any specific allergy questions, they'd be happy to answer those. If you just Google Tayside contracts, they're the contractors that look after all of our meals and the catering is very, very uh, well planned and they have published their meals for weeks and weeks in advance with all the allergy and allergen details in them. But I would advise you getting in touch directly with TSA contracts, they'll set you right on that one. You can also have a wee look on the TSA contracts website. All of the menus are, are on there. So they are, that's a great tip. Thank you very much for that. Anybody else see any other questions that you would like to ask from around the screen? I'd like to answer? There's there's a question, Stuart, just about what um, is a bit further down, but um, what are the schools that are going to join Bertha Park? I don't know whether it's worth us all just introducing and saying what schools we're from and those that are missing, just so that people know, you know the schools that kids will be mixing with. That would be really helpful. Thanks. Yes. So uh, do you want to go first, Sarah? I think you're top of the top of the tree. Yes, um, welcome everybody. I'm Sarah Burke, head teacher from Rutherford Field Primary School. Um, we also have Fiona Lawson from Pitcairn Primary School, so they'll be joining Bertha Park as well. She unfortunately can't get logged in tonight. And we've also got Joan from Logie Ammond Primary School, so they'll also join Bertha Park. I'm Catherine Finlay, I'm head teacher at Octragaven Primary in Bankfoot, um, which will feed into Bertha Park um, in August. Hi, good evening everybody. I'm Louise Kelly and I'm the head teacher at Forgandenny Primary School and the children from our school will also be going to Bertha Park in August. Hi everyone, um, I'm Stephanie Kelly, the head teacher at Methan Primary School and next session we should have 15 or possibly 16 of our primary sevens moving up into Burton Park. Hello, I'm Mary Patterson. I'm head teacher at Barney Primary School in Bridgerton, and our primary sevens are going to Bertha Park after summer holidays. Fabulous, thank you very much indeed. Okay, I'm trying to juggle between some individual questions, trying to get some further information from the people that have not been able to get us online just now, so forgive me if I miss um, a question or two. Um, so, Jane Dean's here. Do children have access to instrument tuition within the school? And if so, which instruments are available? Um, we have the normal run of instruments available for uh, for the first years to take part in. So, in class, they will get classroom type instruments tuition like keyboard, guitar, bass, drums, voice. Um, 
but we also have specific instrumental music tuition instructors. Now, this does tend to change from year to year depending on availability and demand, uh, but in general, we'll have a strings teacher, a brass teacher, a woodwind teacher, and a percussion teacher. Um, we might have also access to a singing teacher as well. But once again, all these things are up in the air just now because well, how do you do singing in a place where you're not actually meant to be singing because it, there's more air comes out and you, all these COVID restrictions. So that's been a real challenge. Also things like brass instruments where you're getting kids to really blow hard into something. You're not really meant to be asking them to expel an awful lot more air. So these things are a little bit up in the air at the moment. No fault of anybody's other than the, the current situation that we find ourselves in. But that information usually comes out very, very early in August to all S1 parents um, as soon as Jason Blythe in music finds out what the availability of the tutors are. You should get some kind of communication to say, OK, we've got so many places available in piano, so many places available in drums. If your kid is interested, fill in this form and we'll see what we can do. So look out for that. There's a question, question there about lunch arrangements, for kind of mm -hmm. practical things, lunch arrangements and the situation with uniform due to COVID. Yeah, just getting to the, the COVID uniform with CAT. What's the situation with uniform due to COVID? Um, the situation is a little bit of a delicate one at the moment. The uniform, we took our foot off the gas a little bit and laxed uniform a little because the kids were in school, they were out of school, they were in school, they were out of school, and the kids are growing at a great rate of knots these days, and some people didn't think that it would be a great idea to invest in lots of new uniform and um, if they'd outgrown it, if they were only going to be in for a few weeks and then out again. There's also the delicate issue of people that might have been out of work due to COVID, um, and the income into the house is really a lot more restricted than perhaps it would normally be. So we didn't want to put extra pressure on these people. Um, however, come the summer holidays, we are looking at a little bit of a relaunch for a number of issues um, that some of the kids have struggled with in getting back from the school closures. So school uniform will be one of those. So we're hoping that everybody has had um, the opportunity to recover to such an extent um, after the summer holidays to be able to relaunch the uniform and encourage people to wear it. Now, contrary to popular belief, nobody can actually make kids wear uniform. It really does lie at home for the parents to encourage that with the young people before they leave the house. Um, so what we can't do is send people back and say, you're not in school uniform, you're not coming into school. That's that's not allowed anymore, maybe in days in, in the past that was. It's certainly not the case anymore. So it's, it's really a case of winning hearts and minds with the families out there to encourage the wearing of school uniform. Um, but we will be doing a relaunch of that, hoping for a complete um, rejuvenation of the full school uniform policy, which you'll find on our website from August. Hope that's answered your question, Kat. Um, I think um, all our feeder schools as well, Stuart, have already sent out the information that you shared about Stevenson's as well for where to access lasers and things. And I know a lot of the parent councils sometimes help out with uh, the school ties, purchasing those for the schools, and what's something that we do at Medfin, to just mm -hmm. as a reminder, some of the parents, you may not have to buy a school tie for going next year because it may be a leaving gift from your parent council. Okay, cool. Um, somebody's asking, can children request a friend to be in their class if they don't know any from the current school going to Bertha? Um, it's a possibility that that can happen. The guidance staff and the people support staff work really, really hard to make sure that people do know somebody. Um, so give it a go the way it is just now. And if it's not working and really don't know anybody that's coming up that's going to be in their class, maybe mention that to the guidance members of staff um, at a later point and see if we can try and retrospectively sort that. Um, but the problem with doing that initially is that you end up with, you know, over a hundred requests saying, I want to be in with this pal, I want to be in with that part, and that's not actually manageable. So we ask for people's patience to try and see if we can make it happen with the lists that the guidance staff and the support staff have in place, um, first of all. But if it's not working, do get in touch. Stuart, can I just jump in there and say that one of our um, transition meetings, Mrs Ainsley actually said that she's going to send out a form to the primary sevens this term so that they can fill in the names of two or three people in their class or their year group that they would like to have in their class at high school and where possible and as best as possible they will go and look at those lists when they're making up class lists. But it's not a promise. 
Fabulous. Well, that's that's a very very generous offer from Miss Ainsley. <laughs> um, okay, thanks a lot for that. Uh, Eve is asking, how many classes on average will I have in a day? You'll have four classes, uh, four 80-minute periods. You'll have period one, which lasts up until 10.30, then you'll have a break, <clears throat> and then another period which will last till lunchtime, and then two periods in the afternoon with a five-minute break in between. What are the arrangements, please, for lunch, asks Lindsay. Uh, okay, so at the moment, um, lunch is five past 12 to 10 to 1. And currently, the arrangements are that the kids can either order it uh, during the, when they first come into the readiness class first thing in the morning, or they can pick up some grab and go food. At the moment, because of COVID restrictions, there is no food being eaten in the building. So it's a grab and go service. The, the, the food that they can pick up as they walk through the survey is designed to be grab and go. There's no plated meals, in other words, um, and all the pre-ordered food comes in a bag. So the idea is the kids go, spend the minimum amount of time in close proximity to each other, and they go outside to eat. Um, that's the current arrangements. It seems to be working well. Um, I think we'll be keeping that for the foreseeable future, um, but we'll we'll need to revisit that closer to the time and find out what the restrictions are looking like. Okay, will the children coming from non-feeder schools be included in the half day visit? Uh, if it's a placing request, then I don't think that that would be part of the plan for the guidance crew. If it's a non-feeder school with some kids who are actually coming to to Bertha Park uh, by prior arrangement, then it might be, my advice would be to get in touch with Miss Ainsley um, tomorrow morning with that specific question. Unfortunately, she's unable to get a hold of all this, uh, unable to get into the system, and she has all this information which um, in detail. So if you get in touch with Miss Ainsley tomorrow, morning um she'll be able to give you exactly the the answer that you're looking for per as it applies to to your child i think also stuart um because if, it, if it's relating to your placing request as well those aren't decided until the middle of may so i mean that information might be quite a while coming so missing we might not even have that tomorrow morning either and maybe one of the ones that uh, we just have to wait a little while longer um because we couldn't share that until we knew whether the child was accepted or not to the school okay okay um, Jane Deans is asking, is there a buddy system for new pupils? Normally a buddy system would be somebody from six year buddying up from somebody with first year because we don't have any six years. It's not been a thing that we've done so far. Um, so at the moment, I don't think there are any plans for a buddy system unless anybody around the screen's heard one of Miss Ainsley's fabulous new project, projects that I don't know about. No, okay. I don't think there's going to be a buddy system set up just because the fact that we've got quite young year groups in school at the moment. I think someone else further down, Stuart's asked the same question just to see if they were buddying up with um, S4s or not. There's another question on that same topic. Okay. Um, Tina's asking, how will my son fit in violin tuition? If he already gets violin tuition, that should continue forward into um, high school. I don't really know if I'm understanding the nuances of the question, how, how will it fit in? Uh, normally, what would happen is if he, re if he gets violin tuition, he would be extracted from a, a portion of a class, maybe for a 20 or 30 minute lesson, um, and then they would get the, the, they get the, the violin lesson then, and then get popped back into class with the assurance that year on, uh, week on week rather, they'll not be taken out of the same class. Hope that answers the question. Stuart, there was an earlier question from Julie asking if you know how many first year classes there are likely to be. I know you don't have confirmed numbers yet, but that was a, an earlier question. Okay, uh, uh, can you leave that one with me? I'll try and get chapter and verse on that um, by contacting somebody that will be able to be exactly correct, but we're probably looking at about six or seven classes depending on the final number. And of course, that changes with practical and non-practical subjects because non-practical subjects have got 30 kids in them. So there might be five non-practical subjects, but maybe six or seven practical classes. So for the likes of maths and English and social subjects, etc., cetera, um, we could be looking at about five classes. And for the practical subjects like uh, CDT, computing, 
music, art, etc. There could be up to seven classes, but it changes depending on what the subject is. Scott Deans is asking, what subjects are children taught in S1? Ooh, okay, so we've got business studies, computing studies, craft and design technology, music, PE. We've got modern languages, um, English language, social subjects, art, uh, personal and social education, maths, science. Um, you've also got opportunities for... Um, for contextualized learning and project-based learning and interdisciplinary learning where you combine all of these different subjects into the one. So there's a huge plethora of things to go through, but it's the full broad general education and you'll get more details on that on our website. Actually, the website, Stuart, is full of information for parents. Actually, it's a really good stop off point um, for lots of questions. Maybe they don't get answered tonight. There's you do really you keep a very, very good um, <laughs> website, I must say, for, for information. Thank you. Um, are all tasks taking place in school? Is there info on them on parents? Well, with that, what Stephanie's just said in mind, uh, there'll be lots of information on the website, but yes, all tasks are taking place. I'm guessing if that that might be a COVID related question. Are all tasks taking place in school? Uh, at the moment, we have a full curriculum running, yes. Uh, it might be a transition task question. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, maybe transition task, in which case, I think it is all school apart from the cooking, which looks like it might have a bit of home element in it. Okay. Um, so that, uh, I've hours are posted on their class team as well, because sometimes they're accessing it there. Um, so if any parents are hovering over a child's shoulder on their class team at home through Globe, they could see them then too. Yeah, we've sent them home as well. Okay, I'm going to try and rattle through some of these questions with perhaps less of a um, involved answer because I've got lots and lots of questions. To get. I just had a wee scroll through and went, I've got loads to get through. So will music tuition work on the same principles as just now where they have a set day for lessons that is out with normal music lessons? Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Where are we now? Hayley at Dunbarney asking what schools are going to Bertha? I think we we've answered that already, folks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what other schools are joining Bertha? Right, we've done that one mm -hmm. already as well. Um, there are only two children coming up from my son's school, so would it be possible to keep together in classes? I think we've covered that already with uh, Miss Ainsley's request form. Um, what is the school's anti-bullying policy? It is the same as Perth and Ross Council's anti-bullying policy. Um, it, all the, the schools in PKC have to adhere to the same policy, which you will find either a link to on our website or certainly just Google it for Perth and Ross Council and you'll pick it up from theirs. What's the capacity of each class in each lesson? I think we almost covered that earlier on. Practical subjects um, such as music and art and craft design, technology and computing have a capacity of 20. And nominally, we try and keep 30 for the non-practical subjects such as maths and English um, and social subjects, etc. Um, the buddies question we've answered already. What additional sporting activities are available for Bertha Park students? Okay, Kirsty, thanks for asking that. Um, we have lots of extra sporting activities available pending the restrictions. We have had lots of our activities hampered by the policy of not being able to allow kids to be in close proximity on the inside, expelling all that air. Um, but we're hope hopefully turning a bit of a corner and we'll have a full range of extracurricular activities, lunchtime clubs and all the rest of it um, come the new session. We also have enhanced learning in football and rugby. More information from Mrs Tramontanis on that one from our PE department. I believe as a football team at Bertha Park, are there plans in place to encourage competitive sport for girls by starting a, a netball team? That's certainly something that you could put to our sports coordinator, who is just um, not long started. So she'll be looking for ideas for people that have got particular interests in particular subjects. So again, look out for some communication coming from Mrs. Tramontanis um, and put your ideas forward to there and I'm sure somebody will take you up on them. I presume, Stuart, the football team is not limited to boys. Absolutely not. No, not at all. In fact, we've got some very, very talented girl uh, players, some people that actually play for teams out with that I have seen literally 
running rings around the boys. So that was that was lovely to see. Um, how many pupils will be in one class and will they be mixed from different schools? Uh, it depends, again, on what the subject is. Some subjects will have um, up to 20, other subjects will have up to 30, and yes, they'll be mixed from all through the different schools. What is the uniform, the school uniform colours? Okay, you'll find all details about the uniform on our website. We are really looking for black shoes, black trousers or skirt, white shirt, school tie and a school blazer. Um, but the, the, the school colours in detail you'll get on our school website. What about making friends for pupils that don't know anyone? There will be lots of tasks from August. As I said earlier on, normally we would have uh, tasks before August to get people to get to know each other, but that's not been possible because of the pandemic. Come August, we'll be looking at getting a lot more people involved with other kids as well. Roughly how many pupils are in each class? I think we've covered that a couple of times. Val's asking, what is the policy with mobile phones? That's a really good question, Val. We have been um, moved to revisit that policy uh, over the past few months. I think the the effect of having young people at home for the best part of a year on and off um, has been that they are much more comfortable and much more used to having their mobile phones on them all the time. Now, when we first started Bertha Park, we said it was a no mobile phone uh, zone. So the kids would come in in the morning, put them into their um, their lockers or at the very least put it on themselves. But the important part was that we didn't want them interrupting their learning. So phones were not allowed out in class time uh, and that policy ran really really well um, up until the point that we had to get the kids back after year one um, when they came back in August and we started noticing a couple of the mobile phones becoming a little bit more prevalent uh, because they'd been so used to it and then since we came back after um, uh, after Easter there, it has been a lot more prevalent. So it's one of these things like uniform that we're going to be revisiting, especially for the launch back in August. So the bottom line is uh, we do not want mobile phones um, in the class at all. We realise that for various reasons the kids will want to have them on and so will um, so will the, the parents at that time too. Taylor. I think we have Fine. Heather Ainsley joining us. Hello, I don't know what you did to magically push those buttons, Heather, but you're very, very welcome um, to be here just now. Um, so, uh, we'll be re Val, we'll be revisiting the mobile phones policy and having a fresh relaunch um, that the pupils either don't bring them to school or they bring them to school and put them in the locker, and at the very most, they stay out of sight for the time in the school building. Obviously, we can't um, police that uh, at intervals and lunch times where they'll be free to use their phones. Hopefully that's answered them. So can you hear us okay, Heather? I don't know if Heather can hear us okay. Miss Ainsley, can you hear what we're saying? It would appear not. Okay, I think, um, I don't know if anybody's got the ability to contact Miss Ainsley. I do, but I can't talk and answer the questions. Well, <laughs> I'm Miss Ainsley at the same time. In the morning, put them into their, um, the their lockers, or at the very least, put it on themselves. But the important part was that we didn't want them interrupting their learning, so phones were not allowed out in okay, class time. Got their and that speak up really, loud. really, really well, um, up until the point that we had cells. But the important part was that we didn't want them interrupting their learning, so phones were not allowed out in Okay. Uh, I don't know what's happened there. I don't know if everybody else is getting that enormous amount of feedback from the, the words being repeated there. So I think yeah. still perhaps have a glitch in the system. Uh, PKC have told us that we would hear by 30th April regarding placing requests. <clears throat> My guess is that you haven't heard um, so far. Yeah. That's something that's completely out with the school's control, I'm afraid. I think you might need to check with PKC on that one again. I don't have any information to share. I'm sorry. I think the dates were. Um pushed into me um certainly i think for primaries i'm not sure for secondaries but it'd be worth checking yeah just with pkc for that okay um maybe somebody from else from around the screen might be able to message heather for me please on the on the chat and on the 
the side of the screen, see if she can hear us and if she can contribute. Um, can Ian's asking, are extracurricular team sports offered by the PE department, for example, rugby, football? Thank you for your Q&A tonight, very much appreciate it. Well, thank you for that, Ian. Extracurricular team sports are being offered. Yes, uh, rugby and football are two of the most popular. I think Mrs. Tramontanis, who's the head of PE, um, has a little bit of a surprise in line for rugby. I think we're getting some extra rugby support um, from the SRU, so look out for information coming on that. But that certainly will be on an extracurricular um, basis. Now, um, extra team sports for football. Now, last year we had uh, one of our members of staff who was really keen on coaching a football team and he was able to take them. That member of staff no longer with us just now. So we'll need to find somebody else that would be willing to take the, the school football team. So, uh, But I think it's a, a safe bet to say that as soon as we're allowed to run the extracurricular activities, uh, football and rugby will be in for, uh, included in that, Ian. So did I hear in the background that uh, Heather can hear us now? Yes. Uh, She's got her just now, though. Sorry? Yeah. I can hear you now. You can, great. Okay, Heather, if you can hear me, please feel free to have a look through the questions. If you can see the questions, pick one that you think yeah. you might like to to, uh, to take. Okay, first one I can see is who would be the young person's key point of contacting when communicating with parents? Um, so that would be um, the allocated guidance teacher for your young person. So when they come up, we have three guidance teachers, so that's myself. Uh, Miss McNabb and Miss Mrs Cuthbertson. So they will be um, told who their guidance teacher is when they come up and that would be the person that you would phone and speak to if you had any concerns about your child. I should have actually probably introduced Heather earlier on. Heather Ainsley is one of our new guidance principal teachers. She's a member of staff at Bertha Park High School and is um, one of the leading figures in coordinating the transition projects. So all these questions that we've been flying by the seat of our pants with for the past half an hour, um, Heather is the font of all knowledge on these things. So her input is greatly received. Um, we have had no info from our school, re any transitions right. as only three children going to Bertha, who should I contact? Um, now that would depend on what your school is. Only three children going to Bertha. If it's one of our, I, th I think in the first instance, you just really contact the, the school admin office and ask for a little bit of support. Perhaps one of the members of staff in the school would contact you, perhaps the head teacher, um, maybe a deputy head would contact you and let you know what the situation is. But it all depend on whether you're one of the cluster primaries or whether it's a placing request, etc. cetera. Um, if all else fails, uh, give our school a phone and we'll be able to help you as much as we can. Yeah, can I just add, I'm happy to answer any questions if, if um, they want to get in touch with me. Um, I think I know what school that might be that they're referring to and there is three pupils that are within catchment. So um, if they want to get in touch tomorrow morning, um, then I can sort something out with them. Okie doke. Um, okay, we've got two questions about school buses. Will the school buses be supervised? And I heard there's been some trouble on the school buses with bullying. How is this being policed? Um, the school buses situation, um, they are out with the school's jurisdiction. They are actually um, the, the bus companies that manage those and we do not police of no uh, no school in PKC polices uh, the the situation on the buses what we try and do is encourage the young people uh, to act responsibly on the school buses what we can't do is put a member of staff on the school buses to actually act as a warden now a lot of the times rumors will uh, continue that we've had one or two instances. I'm not going to deny that. It's been uh, difficult in one or two of the buses. Some of the buses have been going for the past two years without incident and one or two are slightly more challenging depending on the young people that are on the buses. However, if um, things don't go well on the school bus and we have a young person or young people who are continuously not making good choices for how they conduct themselves than it is within our power to be able to deny them the use of the bus for a fixed amount of time or for a longer amount of time. So if things like that do happen, we can act upon it, but we cannot actually physically police the school buses that is down to the bus companies. Oh. 
OK, I think that's confirmation for you. Heather, thanks, Ms. Sainsley. Non-feeder school, but all in catchment area. Yeah. Also, I think so, this is three people that are in catchment, but they're in a non-catchment feeder. I think it's three pupils at Viewlands that they haven't been included in the online transition because they're not feeder, but I can get the stuff across to them tomorrow. That's not a problem. That's grand. Thank you very much indeed for that. Okay, so I, with regards to transport, with regards to transport, with being currently out of our catchment temporarily for transport, would this be the council I discussed transport with? Let me read that again. With regards to any transport, with being currently out of our catchment temporarily for transport, would this be the council I discussed transport with? I'm not sure I'm getting the, the the point of that one. I'm really sorry. I think maybe Stuart, it's, uh, I'm not sure where the person's living out with catchment and will maybe uh -huh. eventually be in. But I think anything to do with transport, you're actually best getting in touch with PKC because it's not the school that provide the transport. It is the council yep. that provide that and someone at the transport department will be able to answer that for you. And it's the PTU, the Public Transportation Unit at Perth Canals Council that you probably want to get a hold of. So that's probably useful to know that instead of just phoning up the council and hoping to get to the right person. It's the Public Transportation Unit that you want to be asking about. Okay, so I think we've run out of questions just now. Um, we are currently looking at about 10 to 7. <clears throat> we might have about six minutes, six or seven minutes of questions left before our allocated uh, time runs out. Okay, Derek's asking, is there a cashless vending system? Um, yes and no, Derek. We do have cashless vending machines. They were all taken out of commission at the beginning of the pandemic because people touching screens and pressing buttons, etc., was... A, a, a potential gathering ground for the virus. So whilst we do have them, they have not been used for a year. Whether they are reinstated or not um, remains to be seen. We'll need to wait on whatever guidance is available closer to the time. Claire said, can I just say thank you for tonight? You can, Claire. Thank you very much for, for saying that. That's very kind of you. This has been very helpful. You're welcome. Okay, Heather, I don't know if you want to take Jill's question about viewings. Um the prob yeah, the the problem with that one is she's asking about will they be included in the visit days. Um we hadn't planned for that because we're not allowed to mix bubbles just now. So when the primaries come up for the visit days, they'll just come with their class. Um, so that was really organised for the feeder primaries. Um, I don't want to promise anything, but we could maybe look if it is just three at them coming up in some capacity. But um, no, right now we don't have a plan for that, but I'm, I'm willing to have a, a chat about it. Um, and see if there's anything that we can we can do. Oh, thank you. Scott's asking, what is the extent of the Microsoft input to the school? Um, we are not sponsored by Microsoft. We are endorsed by Microsoft. So Microsoft set out their ethos about how they believe uh, transformational education can be enhanced with the use of technology. And they set out their their vision about how they see that going and the Microsoft flagship status means that we have adopted that as our framework for our digital learning. So it's not something that Microsoft come in and influence us uh, by saying you must use our equipment because we've got Apple iPads all the way through the school. It's more an endorsement of the ethos behind the way that we teach the pedagogy behind it um, is based around the Microsoft, what we call the transformational, the ETF, the educational transformation framework. Loads of information on that on our website, Scott. So if you want to delve into it a bit further, check there. 
Um, okay, will the Q&A session be made available afterwards? Sorry, just joined five minutes ago. Yeah, no problem at all. Yes, it is. By the miracle of YouTube streaming live, um, this page, once we all go offline in a couple of minutes, um, you can actually just replay this video from the very same place and it will play from the very beginning. I have no idea how that works, but yes, on this page that you're watching just now, as soon as we come offline, it will be replaced instantaneously by the recording of this chat, so you'll be able to watch it. Um, can PE hoodies be ordered before S1 starts? I don't know. <laughs> I need to check with Mrs. Pam and Tan as she coordinates all of the S1, uh, all the hoodie orders. So maybe a quick email into school for the attention of Mrs. Tramontanis. It's a difficult one to, to remember, but or head of PE. Um, she'll sort you out with a response for that one, Claire. Sure. When are the visit date? Sorry. Yep. I was just going to say, Stuart, I had a look at the public transport unit online and to email them at schooltransport at pkc.gov.uk. Brilliant. Thank you for that. When are the visit days? Uh, they are not confirmed yet. We only got information through the tail end of last week that we had to go ahead to be able to organize these things because we we thought until relatively recently that we would not be allowed to have in-person visits we were told at the tail end of last week actually if you can manage it within bubbles and within your own schools and transportation etc you can go ahead and have them um so we're currently working on that just now the, the date, dates came out late um late today Stuart you've probably not seen them I haven't. Um, from the chris the community link worker so Great. i know um because I've had a chance to have a look, that Octra Gaven is uh, proposed on the 20th of May. So there's, I think then that's the first date. So there'll be dates after the 20th of May. It's, yeah. Um, I can come in on that one. It's four Thursdays that we've put aside starting from the 20th of May. Um, we picked the Thursday because the support team are available on that day. So it'll be a chance for the kids to meet some of the support staff that will be working with them. Um, and it will either be a, more, a Thursday morning or a Thursday afternoon that each primary is allocated. So Medvin, um, Medvin's down for Thursday the 10th of June, an afternoon session for that. Again, we'll obviously have to look into transport and stuff and for that in case that date has to change, but that's our provisional date that we've put in. Great, and that's Our, just come out um, today. So, yeah. would you say? Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, Fork and Denny are the morning of the 3rd of June. Just confirmed that with Chris today. So, we'll be sending out information to families and parents as soon as we can organise and finalise transport details. Um, we've also started to put in enhanced, hopefully, enhanced visits as well in the diary and have a couple of dates. And again, we're looking at transport there. That's the key. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much. So I think the key message is hot off the press. The dates have been agreed and they'll be coming out to parents very, very soon. Um, Elizabeth is asking, do we just pay into parent pay for lunches? Yes, we are a cashless school, so there's no money changes hands at all. So parent pay is absolutely the way you go about doing that. Thanks. Uh, will S1 be given iPads again this year? Yes. Um, we are currently in... Uh, touch with the people that provide the iPads just to make sure that we do have the stock or they, they do have the stock to give us. We ordered these ages ago for your kids. Uh, but of course, everybody in their grands looking for iPads to hand out to all sorts of kids right around the country. Um, so we're just fingers crossed that we get them on time and the hours are set aside because we ordered them ages ago. Uh, but yes, that's the intention. Okay, um, Heather, I don't know if you want to have a look at Pip's question. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to try and have uh, the Viewlands 3, as they seem to have been termed this evening, um, to, to come in. And even if they just have a tour of the school with myself, um, I'll try really hard to make that happen. But like I said before, we can't have them in with any of the other primaries um, because just due to the, the COVID regulations. But I'm, I'm happy to try and have the, the violence three up before before the end of of term okay hopefully not in a paddy wagon <laughs> <laughs> the three, a black mariah um, sure okay. 
Stuart, uh -huh. just to say, Mrs. Murray's just message to say that she is listening, and if any of the parents are there for Logie Almond, the visit's scheduled for the 27th of May for the children there. Fabulous, thank you for that. Okay, I, oh yeah, sorry, carry on, Lady Francis. Sorry, Stuart, can I just add in that Ruthven Field are in the afternoon of the 20th of May? Well, I should tell the Barney parents that we're the 27th in the morning. <laughs> Okay. All this information will be going out to you very soon as well. It's all going to say now anyway. Um, Stuart, there's a question there. Um, parents asking, can, can parents help with the transport um, for the visit? I think it's very, very likely that we're going to have to rely on parents helping with the transport um, because we're not allowed to share. You know, no one's allowed to take anyone else's child and because there's limits on the number of people that can fit obviously in a minibus or the access to what we can book on time um yes we probably will be very grateful if parents can uh, contribute to that so they would contact the primary school in the first instance definitely for that I think what, what we'll do Stuart is uh, I know that Medvin I think all the primary schools have been seeing because these dates have just come out to us today we'll get in touch um, with the families direct so we'll we'll put that information out to our primary seven parents to see what the arrangements are um, because I know that Chris Forber's working hard behind the scenes to try and organise buses um, for us through PKC mini buses which will suit some schools but other schools will be too there'll be too many um, children to fit in a mini bus so they might have to do something a little bit different so it'll be yeah we'll just get in touch with parents direct for that okay when do we receive information about the football team that'll come out when we know our staffing levels and we have got the confirmation that we're allowed to run the extracurricular football again we very much hope that will be the case maybe even before the summer holidays but certainly after the summer holidays and as soon as we have all those details in place for all of the extracurricular activities including football and um, then that'll come out to you from mrs tramontanis Okay, Jill says, thanks for that. My daughter is now delighted to be one of the few <laughs> Can anybody else picture them in stripey tops with handcuffs? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I've watched too many old movies. Um, Inchview visit day, does that... that... That's not being confirmed. Um, it's just awaiting confirmation. Great, thank you for that. And I think the last one is Claire says, the only reason I've asked is that I've ordered my older sons, so would it be possible to order Kyle's at the same time, even though he has not yet started? I'm guessing that's a hoodie question. Um, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be. If she's taking orders for older children, maybe ordering S1s would be fine, but a quick email into the school for the attention of the head of PE would sort that one out for you, Claire. Um, thanks for asking. Ladies and gents, I think that's about us. We're, we've got this slot booked until 7pm and we've worked right up to the wire. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, thanks for bearing with us when we had the little technical hitches at the beginning, but hopefully you found this information um, useful for you today um, and you continue to get as much out of the, the transition process as possible. Um, okay. One or two comments coming in. Great, thanks again. Click. You're welcome. Um, final one. Our placement requ our placements requests very limited. How many do each school get? My child's friend have applied, but the reality to get in, my child won't know anyone. This is something that is managed completely out with the school. We don't have any data on this to share with you. We're not just keeping this information back, but the whole process of placing requests is managed by Perthic and Ross Council, not by Bertha Park High School. So you'd need to get in touch with them for chapter and verse on that one. Sorry, it's not the answer that you're looking for, but we just don't have that data to be able to share with you. Uh, Jennifer says, thank you, very useful. You're very welcome, Jennifer. Um, great, so we look forward to, to seeing you in, um, in the, the, the hopefully not so distant future when we can get parents and kids back up to school uh, and uh, see the whites of all of your eyes again. Um, oh, it's the Viewlands 4, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Um, Scott Dean says many thanks for this. Okay, folks, um, just asking around the screen, does anybody else have anything that they want to contribute before we sign off with the parents? Just not to hesitate to get in touch you know, with your primary school. I'm sure we all feel the same um, if there's any questions and things that we can answer. You know, um, you know we're happy to. 
Great. Anybody else with any final words of wisdom? Great. Okay. Everyone, thank you very much indeed for your time this evening. Hope it's been useful for you. And we look forward to seeing you, but most of all, look forward to meeting your kids sometime very, very soon. See you later, everyone. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.